Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing yet again the legendary Masahiko Kimura. Kimura has been all over the place throughout his life. Street fights, knife fights, fixed fights through professional wrestling. He was in the army, all Japan judo champion. And of course, his very memorable fight against Elio Gracie, which is probably his most famous fight, at least in the Western world. But today, we're going to be talking about his MMA fight. And so, um, we're going to go eight years into the future. So, in 1951, he fought Elio Gracie and he solidified his legacy as one of the greatest judokas. But eight years later, in 1959, a 27 year old Valdemar Santana wanted to challenge him for a jiu jitsu judo fight. Here you see them together in the gi, a very iconic photo. And so the fight was initially going to be just judo and jiu jitsu. Santana being a Gracie jiu jitsu student, and of course Kimura being a judoka from Japan. So the fight starts. Kimura drops him down with Seo Enage, and then later on he would use his dominance through, of course, his attitude and his uh, strength. And I say Seo Enage, not Ippon Seo Enage. Um, and then later he would use Hane Goshi, and then finally finishing him off with Ude Garami, same way as he finished. Elio Gracie, he could not prevent it, he could not defend it, and then Kimura came out the winner. But Kimura, if you know anything about him, um, he was also a striker, and Santana wanted to prove that he was the better one because a year prior, Santana beat Elio Gracie in a Valle Tudo style fight, which is very similar to MMA fight today. In way more than three hours finishing him by a knockout and so they decided on an mma fight or a valet tudo style fight and the fight starts santana was clearly the better striker having a capoeira and boxing background kimura only a karateka so kimura decided to rely on his ground work so he goes for ippon seoenage but since they were sweaty and there's no jacket, Santana slipped, Kimura fell on the ground. Santana followed him and then punched him in the stomach and headbutted his stomach three times. Kimura maintained his composure. As he was going for the fourth headbutt, Kimura punched him in the forehead between the eyes. And then Santana started bleeding. They both stood up. They kept fighting until exhaustion and the fight was decided to be a draw and so Santana was never able to beat Kimura although he was 15 years older Kimura at the time was 42 Santana was 27 so here you see that um, Kimura was actually a very tough fighter with his uh, routines for example he would see his opponents do 500 push-ups he would say I'm gonna do a, a thousand his mental toughness obviously was a huge advantage for him beating someone 15 years younger than him in two formats. I would say if you were, if it went by decision, it's probably going to go to Kimura. Uh, the I'm talking about the Valley Tudo fight. Now, that's not the only thing that um, would happen. Many things happen actually. You see, um, after that fight, the 40-minute fight. He went back to J to Japan and then taught in the Tokushoku University uh, in 1960. And so he taught a lot of people who went on to be Olympians like uh, Doug Rogers, Nishimura, and uh, many other champions. His uh, rank only reached seventh dan, and because there was some type of dispute with the Kodokan, because. Um, him being becoming a professional wrestler at one point if you remember the Ricky Dozan fight you would know that 
uh, fights like these are fixed. And the reason why the Kodokan had a problem with this is it's only for show and also it does not reflect the values of Kodokan. Um, the, right, the founder said this and the reason why I'm saying this it was done of course in his time through carnivals and festivals and even today if you watch professional wrestling you would see the build up you would see the promo and you would see a lot of disrespectful attitudes are there and barely any morals and you see these staged pranks and the, the names they call each other what have you and of course the fact that they are fixed fights also uh, you know, reduces from the integrity of the of the discipline and so Kano was heavily against this type of uh, training and so Kimura obviously doing this uh, the Kodokan did not favor this type of uh, behavior another thing that was a problem is that in Brazil Kimura was actually issuing Don ranks for people. Now, I, I'm not sure if it was through their federation over there or it was a Kodokan rank that he was giving out. I'm pretty sure it was a Kodokan rank that Kimura was giving out. And Kodokan obviously had an issue with this because there's a whole body and structure in Japan that you have to you know, give papers to, pay, go show up fight compete in order to uh, ascend the ranks while kimura was over there alone doing it because if it was through the brazilian federation i'm pretty sure that would have been fine but it's probably a kodokan scroll that he was issuing i'm not sure but if you have if anyone has another uh, or more information on this please let me know and this is according to judo info and i'll leave the link they also have a copy uh, of his book my judo which is his autobiography you can also read it i'll link it in the description below so um, of course we all know that kimura later on died in uh, through lung cancer at the age of 75 which is unfortunate um, he was a heavy smoker i'm sure this played a role unfortunately but you know bad habits unfortunately have they have a price to pay so um I'll leave the link in the description below. If you have anything to add, please let me know down below and consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content. My main content will always be on this channel. Also check out my second channel if you are interested in art and architecture history. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.